Hello there. My name is Dr. Anton Jessup, curator of monster studies here at the university. I join you once more from the expansive university basement, home to a number of fascinating and deadly artifacts, including this one. You may know it as Cthulhu or Hulu, but his name was not meant for human lips to mutter, nor his true form meant for human minds to comprehend. And yet, when we look to this great old one, we can still see shadows of the natural world. To quote the great H.P. Lovecraft, Hulu presents us with a monster of vaguely anthropoid outline, but with an octopus-like head whose face is a mass of feelers, a scaly, rubbery-looking body, prodigious claws on hind and forefeet, and long, narrow wings. While godlike in the eyes of humans, this entity is far from omnipresent or immortal. Cultists believe that mighty Hulu and its spawn plunged from the inky black cosmos in ancient times and established a great city on the prehistoric Earth. When this mad metropolis sank beneath the waves, all of its alien inhabitants entered a deathless, dreaming sleep. See, while mortality is part and parcel to natural selection here on Earth, Hulu's alien evolution favors long periods of dormancy for interplanetary travel, perhaps even constituting a form of biological immortality. And so Hulu dreams beneath the waves, awaiting its eventual rise and reconquest of a doomed world. And to think he's coming soon. What a fabulous time to be alive. And yet, until Mighty Hulu actually rises from the depths, all we can do is compare the hearsay with the more Holuthian aspects of the natural world. Accounts of Hulu are often vague and conflicting, yet still they may reveal the entity's biological nature. Consider the account depicted here by French monster chronicler Christophe Gans. We see hoary Hulu employ an ingenious deceptive means of capturing prey. Its long, trailing tentacles feature a specialized tip disguised as a nude human female. This pseudo-sapien lure even speaks and makes sexual advances towards its prey, the perfect means of snaring lonely sailors and melancholy brooders. While Hulu's lady tentacle is certainly more animate than anything in nature, some natural world organisms are known to flaunt a bit of bait as well. For starters, consider the spider-tailed horned viper, which wriggles its bizarre tail to lure in arachnid-hungry birds. And then there's the alligator snapping turtle with its pseudo annelid lure on the end of its tongue. This undulating worm-shaped bit of flesh draws fish directly into the turtle's waiting jaws. And what of prehistoric tentacles? What of alien minds enacting an alien will on creatures in a pre-human world? These questions lead us to the controversial Kraken hypothesis of paleontologist Mark McMenamin. In analyzing the fossil remnants of a prehistoric cephalopod beak and a curious arrangement of dead ichthyosaurs, he formulated a startling hypothesis. What if this 98-foot octopod had gathered the remnants of its ichthyosaur prey in its lair, forming a necromantic midden, much like its modern relatives? And what if this Triassic kraken had arranged their bones in this unnatural pattern to resemble its own pattern of tentacle sucker discs? A horrifying work of art, an ancient self-portrait, and a glimpse into a 200-million-year-old inhuman mind. 
That which is not dead may eternal lie, and with strange eons even death may die. Time is short, but I eagerly await your suggestions for other monstrous entities worthy of our discussion here. In the meantime, keep circulating the tapes. In transmission.